Hi everyone, I'm Max and I'm currently working on my first full game, False Dichotomy. I made a bunch of other videos already that you can find linked below for more information about my game. In this video, I want to talk about the level editor because one thing I want to support is the community. I mean, I come from the modding community and I started with making maps for Half-Life. So I want people to be able to create custom content uh, for my game from the beginning and so just having a level editor in my game just from the get-go as is a thing I, I had planned all along. So in this video I just want to talk a bit about you know how I made the level editor and by that also in general how um, the level generation in my game works because the game also has the ability to do randomly generated levels if players um, want to do that. So here you can see the level assets, like the individual assets for Team Nature in their clean state. So there are two teams, Team Nature, Team Science. And while they are in the same level, they do see completely different environments. And in order for this to work, it's a modular system where the level is essentially a grid, I will show that later. And then once you're in game, uh, the game then generates a visual level uh, taking pieces, blocks, for either team. And what you're looking at right now, these are the building pieces for the nature team. And these are the building pieces for the nature team in their polluted version. Now, these are not done. Just so you know, these are not the final uh, building pieces. Also, I think from the screenshot, yeah, that's like, that's the last LOD level, actually. That's why the trees are like so low poly. And the next one, this, these are the science pieces. And you can see, you know, it's, it's basically always the same kind of concept. You have these like very narrow walls. You have wider walls in the background. Uh, you have these floor pieces and they are, they are always the same for both teams and they always exist in the clean version and in the infected or polluted version. And then this one is the infected version for team science. So these are the building blocks, but how, how does the game actually turn these building blocks into a level? Most important thing is that it's a grid. So the level is always a grid. And this is what I started with when I worked on the level editor was to just be able to place um, each individual grid cell, which you can look at here now where I'm just, you know, removing and adding individual grid cells. That's, that was, that was the absolute fundament. This is the basic or the, the basis for levels in this game is grid. From there, I, you know, I just continued. So here you see um, the grid works much nicer. You know, you can drag and drop and you have this like little indicator thingy um, that shows you where you are. And there you already, you have the first pieces. They are obviously wrong, but they are being added. So it's the correct ones, but they're not in the correct position. So this was the next step while making the level editor was basically okay, add these pieces at the right position, which is the next thing that we should see. Yeah, here we are. So just full disclosure, I recorded these months ago and I'm just like going back through them with you. So here you see, now the level is being generated correctly. Like I can just drag and drop the, the grids and then along the grid, uh, the game generates these wall pieces. Um, it doesn't generate the ceiling yet. So it's, it's just the wall pieces, but you know, it's, it really works quite well. You can remove a block and then walls will appear. You can add a block and it will make the room bigger. So that's, that's fantastic. You know, that's, that was the most important thing to get down. So now we have a little menu. This is, of course, just a temporary menu and will look much nicer. And now we see the, the nature assets. And also, um, this is where you are actually able in the level editor to paint the infection. You know, how clean is it there or how infected is it there? In the final level editor, which you see later, um, you can do a random infection or you can paint it manually, as you see here. Here we have the science one. Right, the switching, the switching. Okay, so this is where you can switch between um, either version um, so that when you're making the level, you can see what it actually looks like for either team. Um, so that was the next feature that I worked in that you can just, you know, immediately see, okay, 
what this looks like. And there's the random infection button that already works and you can just click it and it just, you know, tries to keep it at 50-50 in total. It just, you know, spreads, spreads it out in the level. And then you can still manually paint it if you want. So as you saw before, uh, we didn't have, um, we didn't have a ceiling yet. Uh, so that's that's the next thing I did. So you see me uh, painting the grid uh, with a little video artifact for some weird reason. And there's the roof. There's, there's the ceiling being generated with random roof lights that are still distributed in a non-optimal way, but they're there. <laughs> and also the um, ceiling lights as they are there now um, are in nature are basically just holes in the roof where the sun shines through. Um, that actually changes or, or has already changed um, because the nature assets are still a very work in progress. But yeah, so th that's there. We, we have a roof. We basically have all the fundamentals down. You can paint the grid. Um, it generates the, you know, the little modular level pieces where they belong. Uh, you can click to get a random infection. You can paint the infection. Um, but there's one more thing, because as I said in the beginning of the video, the game also has this ability or, well, actually the, back then it didn't, but I wanted it to have the ability for having uh, random levels. And so I just added that to the level editor where you now have a random level button. So you can just click it and boom, random level. So this again, you know, very early in development. So the first thing it did was it just generated rooms, but it didn't connect them with um, pathways or corridors yet. Uh, so that's why you get like these things that look like houses. They're not really houses because you will never be outside of them. It's just the backside of the level assets is being rendered here for, you know, so you can actually see what's happening. Um, but these are the rooms that, you know, will make up the level. So the next step was to get paths working. Um, here I just, you know, experimented with like the spacing of the room, you know, how do I distribute them? How big do I make them? So you just see, let me just bloop, bloop, bloop through here, bloop, 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 lots of different rooms. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Do we have paths? Ah, uh, we don't have paths yet. So this is still different, different room configurations. There was experimenting. You, you can kind of see that, you know, these, these are more of a grid here than before they were like, you know, more like spaced out. So I, I, I experimented with, you know, where do I put the rooms? And then the next thing I did was add the path between the rooms. Here's a video where the level generator generates path. You can kind of make out where the rooms are and see, you know, that they have these connections, but it's, it's still not ideal. It's, you know, it's, it's very linear and what I wanted is more like a labyrinth, like, you know, something where you have multiple paths. For like the initial thing, for an early thing, this was already fantastic. So here's the next version. And you can again see, let, let me pause this. Let me actually go back to the previous one. Yeah, you can see like if you're here, you have to like go all this way around to end up here because there's no connection here. Also, this bit here, you can't go from there to there. Also, now that I'm saying this, I really hope that my mouse cursor is being recorded by my recording thing. <laughs> because otherwise you have no idea what I'm pointing at. Uh, anyways, so this is of course not ideal. I mean, yeah, everything is connected. And this was, this was my initial algorithm. This was what, what I, what I, what I did at, at the, the first thing, what it was, a blah, blah, the first thing I did was basically just say, okay, I go from like generated room to generated room and just connect them one by one. And that's what you see here, where you just have like this, this really long, um, long thing where you have very little, I mean, here you have a little circle, but you know, this could be connected. This could be connected, uh, to make a much more engaging and interesting map. Let's see what else we generate here. So you, you see, you, you can really see the pattern where it just goes like from room to room. Sometimes it accidentally creates a circle, uh, but most of the times you have these like really long U-shaped or just, you know, line-shaped uh, maps, um, which aren't very fun to play because, you know, you just 
have this like long thing and then maybe one team is there and one team is there and they never even interact. Um, that's of course not ideal. So um, the next thing was me trying to work on that. And they see that now the levels are way more, you know, circular and have more corridors. And so basically I, I kept the original algorithm that just connects the rooms. And then additionally, I also, um, you know, for like every random room, I connected it with a second room. Uh, another thing I did was to just, you know, generate random paths that just go from somewhere to somewhere without even paying attention to if there's a room or not. And so that's what you see here. It's still not ideal. Another thing, um, basically for performance, is that if you're in one location in the level, um, you don't want the entire level to render because you don't see everything. And so that is something that I then worked on and I just used my own level editor because you gave me some you know, visual uh, feedback uh, to implement an algorithm for this. And that's, that's what we see here, where um, you see the level is only visible from like that one corner. And if stuff is like, you know, not visible from that corner, it's simply not rendered. Uh, the next version of this thing would then be to change that position. And that's what we see here, where uh, my mouse cursor is basically the center. And so essentially you can imagine where my mouse cursor is in this video, that's where the player would be. And so then that's the, the parts of the level that are being rendered. Um, yeah, and here we, we, have a, we have a bigger test with like a really big level with the pollution and everything. You can see when, while you're walking around, while you're moving in the level, um, the amount of stuff that is visible. Here you can also see that, you know, the, the generation algorithm I used back then, you know, it sometimes generated these really long corridors, which was not ideal. Um, that has changed by now. I don't think I have like a work in progress um, video for that. But yeah, so that's that's essentially it. And that's, that's basically the level editor. Uh, I mean, the menu that you see there was still a uh, work in progress, but um, that has been fixed. And here is the almost finished level editor. Um, there have been a few changes already that I haven't recorded yet, but you know, it, it really has most of the features um, that the final version for the final game will have. Um, there are also now the, the health stations and the tree of lives already in the map. There are influence radius that you can see here because this one is infected. So a certain area around is always infected. Um, yeah, and that's that's basically, that's pretty much the kind of thing that you will see in the final game um, with, with a few changes. Uh, also, the frames per second sometimes are very terrible. That is actually something I worked on the last couple of weeks, but that's a different video. And I, I managed to get the game from 30 FPS on my machine to 200 FPS, which I'm really happy about. Uh, but yeah, that, that's game development. There's, a, there's always something. Uh, but yeah. I, I hope you enjoyed this uh, video about my level editor for my game. And um, I hope there will be people using it and making amazing fun maps for my game. Um, okay, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, all the info in the thingy. Uh, if you like what I do, consider supporting me, uh, join my Discord, you know, where I engage with my community. Otherwise, I hope you have a lovely day and bye.